Hello and welcome back. Now the stack is the colloquial term for a LIFO buffer. LIFO meaning last in first out and it's been given the name of the stack because that's basically what it is. Imagine I've got a number of bits of data and then I'm going to store them on the stack. So I'm quite simply making a pile of these and the act of adding data to a stack is what we call a push operation. And I've literally made a stack here. The first piece of data to come off it is the last one I pushed, last in, first out. So if I then pop the data back off in sequence, it comes back in the reverse order of what I've put it in at. Now a stack gets used for a lot of different things in programming, but we only really need to give one usage case for you to get an idea of how it's used. And that's with function calling. If I'm executing a function and I'm performing a task with a set of data in my registers, and then I want to call a subfunction, I need to save that working information somewhere. So we push it on the stack. And then after we've gone off and done that other task, we can pop it back off the stack and we've got it again. Let's have a look at how it's actually implemented. Now, like all data structures, there's different ways of actually physically implementing a stack, but it's this last in first out property, which is what we're interested in. So let's first look at this the obvious way. So I've got addresses here, zero upwards. This might be an offset from the beginning of a stack buffer, or it might just be the first address in memory. And so I've, I've said that this 000 address is the first location. So then we're going to have a stack pointer and that identifies where the read write location is. So then my push operation is going to be writing a data item in and then moving the stack pointer up. An additional write operation would follow the same pattern and so on and so forth. A pop operation is the exact opposite. So first off, we need to decrement the stack pointer, and then we take our data item out. Now, the way you would usually implement this in memory, you're not actually erasing that data, but the act of moving the stack pointer has uh, just moved the logical reference, so we no longer regard that data as being in use. So let's actually uh, note down what that is. So the push operation with this layout is going to be assigning the data to the location the stack pointer points at, and then we move the stack pointer up. So note that this means that the stack pointer is actually pointing at the next empty space. Then the pop operation is the opposite of that. Now the people who've dealt with low level programming before are probably screaming at the monitor now that no stacks are the opposite of that. They grow downwards. But I've uh, described it this way because I want to separate the actual implementation that normally happens in a processor from the conceptual data structure of a stack. So these addresses are irrelevant. It's the fact that it's a LIFO queue and it works in a specific way. So exactly where the stack pointer is pointing or what order the address is in is irrelevant to us. On most modern CPUs, the stacks grow down from a high memory location. This doesn't actually relate to people's use of the stack at all. It's actually more way that people use memory for other purposes means that putting the stack at the top of memory makes more sense. So let's uh, flip it upside down. Okay, so now we're at the top of memory. Our stack pointer is pointing at FFFF and we can do the same operations, but we're just swapping increments and decrements around. So push looks like this, and so on. And then as before, the pop is the opposite, but this time when we pop, we're incrementing the stack pointer. And this is how the stack on the x86 processor works with the stack pointer pointing at the empty data slot. That's also not the only way it can be done. We can have the stack pointer pointing at the last pushed data item, and this is the way I'm going to be implementing it on the processor. 
So in order to do this, we just need to modify the order of operations slightly. So now in a push, the decrement becomes before the data write, and in a pop, the increment comes after. Now I've commented on this before in the processor build. The decrements are wired into pipeline stage one of my processor, and the increments are wired into pipeline stage two which is what allows me to perform this operation in a single instruction. And that's why I've done it this way around. It was just more convenient to me. And I had other reasons why I wanted increment in the second pipeline stage and not the first. And so putting the stack this way around just made sense. It was easier. Now this does mean that a completely empty stack, the stack pointer is now going to be pointing at the address before and of course these addresses will wrap around back to zero and as an added convenience when we reset the process of a stack pointer points at zero which would place the stack at the top of memory so that the first pushed item will appear at fffff and then the stack pointer moves down okay let's see if we can get that into the processor now, i've been making a lot of additions to my assembler and one thing i've done is i've spat out spare addresses so I know where I can go and fit instructions in. Now for push and pop we can only work on the 8-bit registers and so it would be nice if I had six sequential addresses. Oh, actually I might want to add something to the I.O. section in a few videos time. Let's put it at 7-1. Okay, that's after the jumps. So while I'm here, I'm going to add an extra jump just because I've been meaning to do it. So using DI as the jump destination. just have room for that. Let's write some test code. So that's nice six visually distinctive patterns. So then let's push them all onto the stack. And then we're going to pop them off in a different order. So I'll swap TL and TH around. And then we'll swap A, B, C and D. Normally if we're saving the contents of registers, we'd be careful to push and pop them in the reverse order of one another. But here we're going to pop them in the same order as we push them so that the data itself will uh, reverse. I've also extended the assembler so I can now specify TX as a destination for a constant load. Now the way this actually works is I haven't added a 16-bit constant. What I've added is the additional annotation I needed in the assembler to implement it as a kind of macro. So a load operation into TX of a 16-bit value turns into the machine code for loading TL and TH separately, but it does make it easier to specify addresses. Well, actually, let's do this. So then we can loop back around our push and pops using our new jump DI. That will give all the new functionality a good test. Let's get rid of all this old temporary code. So you can see up here the way I've implemented the MOV TX. So that has a separate load for TL and TH from constant. Exactly the same instructions as we generate down here at the machine code level. That just makes life easier. So we can treat that as a four cycle instruction. Right, 
So there's our new instructions. One jump, six pushes and six pops. Let's go and implement them. Now for implementing the push, I've gone and grabbed the implementations for both storing a register into memory and for doing the decrement. Because we're going to be doing a combination of those two operations. So main bus assert A address assert SP instead of SI. The rest of that is OK. We want the memory bridge to assert the main bus contents into the memory data bus. We're setting the bus request line so that the fetch unit doesn't try and grab an instruction. We also want to decrement SP. Now I've put this at the end to keep it looking similar to the memory write operation, but this flag is in pipeline stage one, so that's when it's going to happen. And then the pop is pretty much the same, only we're copying the memory read and putting an increment in. Okay, so I need to update all of the control ROMs and the program ROM and get this back into the uh, processor build. Right, so first instructions are to load the address of loop into DI. So load TL and then load TH is going to be, that's going to be zero. Yep. And then we've got a copy of TX into DI. Good. And we're going to load six different values into A, B, C, D, TL and TH. Patterns that I thought were interesting at the time that are distinguishable. And then here's our first push. Now, push has operations in both pipeline steps. So in this one, it's going to decrement the stack pointer to point to the top address of memory. And then up here, it's going to write. So as the decrement happened, and then we should be, this is a push A, so we should see A asserted onto the main bus, onto mem data, and then we should see the memory write line happen. And that looks good. Same for B. And C and D. And then TL and TH. So now, pops, we do TL and then TH, so these two should swap locations. And then we pop these 
in the same order so the data should reverse directions. So here's pop TL. Now we don't modify the stack pointer here, but it should modify it at the same time as the memory read operation. But remember, we latch the output, so that doesn't affect, take effect until the next cycle. And that's got the right value in it. So now TH should get the value that was in TL previously. Nice. This is promising. So now we should be able to step through and see A, B, C and D change because we're popping those and they'll take up the reverse values. Excellent. Ah, awesome. Okay, that's cool. That's working. We've got the stack operations, push and pop for all of our main 8-bit registers working. That's cool. I did leave you hanging a little bit on the address problem in the last video. I solved that in between videos, but I think I'll, um, I'll talk about that a little bit in the next video because it wasn't what I thought it was. It didn't slot neatly into this video at all but uh, it was quite a simple fix. I hope you found this interesting. I'm hoping I'm going to have a little bit more free time over the next few weeks, so uh, I should be able to pick up the pace a little bit. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.